Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Shinjuku Station in the heart of Tokyo. We are taking the Narita Express train to Tokyo Narita Airport Terminal 2. This is expected to take exactly one hour and 20 minutes. I love how organized and on time Japanese trains are. You will arrive at the basement level of the airport, so take the escalators up to the departures area. Look at the TVs to find out which area you should go for check in. Here are the self check in kiosks and baggage drop counters for Japan Airlines business class passengers. The process is very smooth and there are Japan Airlines staff to assist if needed. In business class, you get an impressive allowance of three check in baggages, each at 32 kilograms. Once done, head to the fast track security lane dedicated to business class passengers. On the other side of security, you will find the first class and Sakura lounges. If you want to see how the Sakura lounges, be sure to subscribe to see my review of this in the future. Walking down the long corridors, there are areas where there's completely nothing except white paints. This can feel pretty sterile, like a hospital. Fortunately, as I walked further to my gate, the sense of being in the airport came back with high end and duty free shops appearing. Nearing the gate, we can see our 787 already parked next to a Sri Lankan Airlines A330. Today, we depart from gate 71 as JL723 to Kuala Lumpur. This flight is expected to take roughly 6.5 hours. Taking a closer look at our aircraft today, we have a Boeing 787 8, registered as Juliet Alpha 845 Juliet. This aircraft is 7.7 years old. The standard Japan Airlines livery is very simple, but I think it goes well on the Dreamliner. Boarding was scheduled to commence in 10 minutes, and of course, business class passengers were given priority. Stepping on board, I was greeted very warmly by a cabin crew member and directed to my seat. Today, I'm at seat 7K by the window on the right side of the aircraft. Arriving at my seat, there are a couple of items neatly laid out, which we will cover in more detail later. A 23 inch LCD screen is right in front. Beneath this are small storage spaces. The seat has a lie flat length of 78 inches and a width of 25.5 inches. Each window seat also has a small pathway to enter and exit from. On the side, there is a handheld controller for the in flight entertainment system, and with the partition down, you can easily see your neighbor. The seat is pretty well cushioned, and you will also have a special air weave pillow, which is supposed to be more comfortable. On the right hand side, you have three windows to yourself with the engine in direct view. Looking at the lower panel, you have the seat controls, and further down, there is a universal power socket and a USB A socket. The handheld controller can be taken out from its slot. Japan Airlines use the Magic 6 software, which is fairly intuitive. I will run through the controller options in more detail later, but for now, I will bring up the flight map on the main screen. The screen quality is pretty good with crisp images. Looking at the Japan Airlines bed menu, we begin with the stars that put together this awesome menu. The drink selection is then shown with a big range of alcoholic and non alcoholic choices. Next is the main menu with your choice of either Japanese or Western styles. Finally, on the last page is the anytime menu and the pre arrival options. At 11 30 am, we began pushback and was on the way to Kuala Lumpur. The safety video was also presented as we left the gate.
As we taxi to the runway, we could see a lot of unique aircraft. Finally, we made it. Farewell, Tokyo. Following takeoff, the partition can be raised. This provides supreme privacy by the window. The switch for the partition is located within the seat control panel. Looking at the surfaces around the seats, there is a narrow area on the left hand side that becomes bigger around the corner. Right in front, under the screen, is a bigger area. Next, as promised, we will look in more detail of the items provided. First up is the free water bottle made by Asahi. This is excellent quality. We also get a pair of slippers, which includes a remover tool. The headphones provided are fantastic quality with comfortable cushioning around your ears. They are also in fact specially made by Sony and even have noise cancelling features. Finally, for the amenities bag, I need to first extend out the tray table to lay everything out. This can be accessed from the narrow surface on the left hand side I mentioned earlier by pulling out the entire table. The tray table was pretty big and very clean. It can also swivel to any direction you want. Getting back to the amenities bag, it is made fully from a cloth material with a Japan Airlines logo stamped on the bottom corner. Inside, you will find an eye mask, earplugs, a toothbrush kit, and a moisture mask. Let's now look at the handheld controller. Initial impressions are that it is very responsive to use. The interface is simple enough and I love how snappy it is. For entertainment, you have a big range of Western and Asian movies. It's really nice that you can look through the list of movies in the palm of your hands and then display it on the big screen once a selection is made. For games, you have three available if you want to play. The Japan Airlines shop catalog is also available if you want to do any shopping on board. Lastly, and perhaps the most used, is the flight map, where you can choose to view it on the device itself or on the big screen in front. 
the flight's map is feature-packed with plenty of extra information and options available. As this is the 787 Dreamliner, the windows of course can be dimmed. This is done by pressing the buttons below each window. To kick off the in-flight services, drinks were offered first and I chose the Asahi beer which came with rice crackers. Inside the pack, there are many assorted items which goes well with a cold beer. During this time, the cabin crew also took my order for the main meal. Of course, I chose the Japanese menu as it would be disgraceful if I didn't get this. Apart from looking absolutely amazing, I'm sure it's also very healthy as well. There's no shortage of premium ingredients used with sliced abalone, snow crab, black cod and wagyu beef included. A small crane chopstick stand is also given. The sliced abalone was tender and tasty, definitely a very fancy dish. The black cod was also very flavorful and I had no trouble finishing off the entire set. Next up is what's called the Dino Mono. This comes with delicious salmon, curry and stewed wagyu beef. Side vegetables are also provided along with traditional miso soup. Unraveling the square bag, we have a block of steamed rice to accompany the food. To finish off, we had what's called a kanmi, which is a soybean mousse topped with red bean and chestnuts. After the meal service, I was very satisfied and was ready to relax. I opened up the blanket, which was soft and comfortable. I nearly forgot the seat pocket items, so let's quickly take a look. To begin, we have the Sky Suite user guide, which basically tells you every function on the seat as well as the entertainment system. Next, an in-flight Wi-Fi guide is provided if you want to use the Wi-Fi. Some magazines for the Japan Airlines shop and general travelling is also provided. Finally, the important 787 safety card is present. Let's now look at the business class lavatories. Inside, it was no bigger than a standard economy lavatory. However, on the counter, there are extra items such as toothbrushes and lotions for your convenience. Overall, the place was kept extremely clean with plenty of extra items in case you need them. Heading back out, it's time to fully recline the seat. Using the control panel, the seat is easily reclined to the flat position. Once complete, the seat will connect with a cushion area under the screen. Lying down, I could easily stretch my legs all the way out without any issues. On the side, I feel some people may be a bit claustrophobic with the narrow space. For me though, I was completely fine. Here's a shot of the fully reclined seat from afar. During the flight, I went to seat 3D a couple of times to see my wife as we couldn't get two seats together. We couldn't pick the two seats by the window before the flight as there were limitations with the Japan Airlines seat selection. I'll talk about this in more detail later. So anyways, on my way back to my seat, the observant cabin crew asked if the person I was talking to was a friend or colleague. After I said it was my wife, she asked if we wanted to sit next to each other in the twin aisle seats available at 8D and G. I declined the offer as I wanted a window seat and was happy to be split up on this flight. So I thought that was the end of that, but 5 minutes later, a cabin crew member came to my seat and said she had found two seats by the window up the very front at 2K and 2H. I was pleasantly surprised by the effort and of course I accepted the offer to move to seats 2K and 2H with my wife. And so, that's where we are right now. After moving seats, we are now in front of the right hand side engine. As expected, the seat is exactly the same with no differences. I'm really enjoying this flight and next I will try something from the anytime menu. I chose the Nissan Udon cup noodles which was specially designed for Japan Airlines. Inside there were a lot of ingredients and it tasted pretty good. You can also get as many as you want during the flight. Here's the divider in action. Using the button, the screen slides up and down pretty fast. With the divider lowered, you get a great balance between being able to talk to the person next to you while maintaining some level of privacy. 
I can't believe how fast time has passed, and now there is less than two hours before arriving at Kuala Lumpur. As promised before landing, the crew handed out desserts, which was a Hagen Dust vanilla ice cream. This was superb and a nice treat to end with. Final drinks were also offered, and I got the orange juice. Shortly after this, the cabin crew came around to prepare everyone for landing and handed out this note. It turns out there are dedicated immigration processing lanes upon arrival for business class passengers. This is a handy extra perk that allows for faster processing. As we begin our descent, let's go through the final ratings for today's flight. Starting off with comfort, the SkySuite business class seats were pretty comfortable and offers excellent privacy with the partitions. Some people by the window seats, however, may find the space a little bit too narrow when lying down. There's also definitely signs of aging in the cabin, however, all devices and seat features were working flawlessly in the two seats I was in during the flight. When it came to actually selecting a window seat, I found the limitations annoying as you can't select any window seats months or even weeks before the flight. As you see in the example seat map, all the window seats are always unavailable to select. After reading through some forums, apparently these seats can only be selected by people with a high Wamu status tier. That means for peasants like myself, the only way around it is to wait for online check-in, which happens 24 hours before the flight. During online check-in, whatever window seat is left becomes available, and that's exactly how I got my window seats on this flight. Consequently though, this forced myself and my wife to get split up, as by this time there were no seats available by the window for two people. I do think this should be changed to a first-come, first-served basis, like most other airlines. But anyways, it is what it is. Having said all that, I'm giving this category a 7.5 out of 10. For food and drinks, the Japanese menu was authentic and very unique. I enjoyed all the items along with the drinks and dessert. I didn't see anyone order the western menu, but I believe this choice would have also been impressive either way. This category gets a 10 out of 10. Next, for timeliness, we took off from Tokyo half an hour later than scheduled, but we'll be landing at Kuala Lumpur 20 minutes earlier than expected. We made up the lost time during the flight, so this also gets a 10 out of 10. Lastly, and certainly not least, is the cabin crew. They were stellar on this flight and provided excellent hospitality. It's the attention to detail that made the difference. They solved my problem of being split up with my wife, even though I didn't actually ask for them to do anything. Again, this category gets a perfect 10 out of 10, and this is actually the first time I have given a perfect score to any cabin crew so far. Wrapping everything up, we get a phenomenal score of 9.38 out of 10. The cabin crew definitely stood out on this flight, and it reminded me of the recent accidents involving the Japan Airlines A350. The aircraft was written off, however, all passengers and crew escaped thanks to the calm and organized cabin crew. The cabin crew was praised for their efforts, and it goes to show they do have a strong training culture at Japan Airlines. Going through old footage, I was lucky to have a clip of the actual aircraft involved in the accident, seen here in her better days not long before the accident. The A350 is such a beautiful aircraft, and it's sad to see one go so soon. As well as this, rest in peace to the 5 people who passed away on the other aircraft that collided with the A350.
Welcome to Kuala Lumpur. It looks like we landed just in time before a big storm is coming in. Thank you for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and comment on what you think of Japan Airlines. As well as this, please consider subscribing for more future content. It doesn't cost anything. If you are also interested in my other Japan Airlines reviews, please click on the cards that appear to see them. As we disembark at the satellite terminal, we will take the shuttle bus back to the main terminal where our luggages can be reclaimed. I'll leave you here on this journey back with some plane spotting. See you next time!